You're not Equal answering the question. I'll take it again in English. I first. just in English. Yeah, yeah. Yes or no? Do you support a consumer carbon levy? Yes or no? Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. In an apparent effort to try and ride the coattails of the conservative polling around the carbon tax, the NDP were very vague last week on their stance when it came to gouging Canadians, all in the name of climate change. Jagmeet Singh faced reporters today, and he screwed up his own press conference so badly that he literally ran away what seemed like in the middle of it. Now, you may be wondering, well, what happened last week? Well... This is what Jagmeet had to say reporters on Thursday. So for the consumer price specifically though, do you want to get rid of it? Do you want to pause it? Do you want to stop the hikes? Like what are you proposing here? For our full plan, we're going to release that plan and we're going to present that to Canadians. So we don't have our full plan laid out, but we have some elements, the principles of our plan. And the principles I want to lay out today were that I find it problematic that the Liberals have set up a divisive system where they're dividing the country. Some people got an advantage very cynically. It was pretty obvious that it was for votes in the Atlantic region. And that's the wrong approach to fighting the climate crisis. It shouldn't be that certain regions get different treatment than other regions. I, I think that's wrong. I also think that, that Pierre Polyev has spent a lot of time making it very clear that Pierre Polyev's approach to have no climate plan and really his plan is to let big polluters dump toxic waste into our rivers. When did that happen? Never. <laughs> like, when did Pierre ever say that? Never. Like, if you guys know of something that he's referring to that we don't, please let us know in the comments because we have no idea what he's talking about and we imagine that it never actually happened. Yeah. Um, it is completely ridiculous. And <laughs> the best thing uh, other than the fact that he says the conservatives are going to be dumping toxic waste in the rivers is that when they ask him what his plan is, they don't have a plan. <laughs> they keep accusing Pierre of not having a plan, but they, you know, he says, well, you know, we have a plan. Uh, well, we don't really have a plan, but it's, <laughs> it's coming together. We have elements of a plan. So the, the hypocrisy is just so amazing there. And he doesn't answer the question. It's very simple. Do you like the carbon tax? Do you not like the carbon tax? So he made this very vague. This caused Laurel Collins, in a video that we covered uh, before, to be asked the same question by Vassy. So let's just revisit that one specific question. I, I think it's also fair for me to ask of you the exact position of the NDP. And, and am, I, am I correct to interpret from what you said that you would keep the carbon tax and the plan that the Liberals have for it to increase to $170 a ton by 2030, but you would at the same time increase the industrial side? So you would not lower or get rid of the consumer carbon tax, to be clear on the NDP's position. What I've said to you before, and I'll say it to you again, we would strengthen the industrial side. And with the consumer side, if the provinces come to us and have credible alternatives, we are all ears. If, you know, we, we already know that Quebec has a system of their own. If provinces want to come and actually have a credible plan that will meet our emission targets. It's, Canadians are struggling with the cost of living and the climate crisis, and we need to tackle these it's a head on. W-T-F. No clear answer. It's, well, you know, if the provinces come to us with a better alternative, you're not answering the question. Okay, so again, we're like, what's going on? Now, the the political quote-unquote experts they commented on this and they had said, well, um, it was kind of an interesting move for Jagmeet to side with the Conservatives, A, on the votes. So that would appease some people that are, you know, getting hit by the carbon tax and the NDP. But then part of the whole ideology is there is a section of the NDP voters that are very pro-climate change and they'd have a big problem if the NDP departed from the carbon tax. So like the Liberals, they're trying to straddle this line with their voters from an ideological standpoint and it is causing them lots of problems and again causing confusion on the, what they support and what they don't. But even that makes no sense. The Liberals have been telling us this whole time, which I mean we know that it's fake, but let's just pretend that it's true. But they've been telling us this whole time that we've 
we're getting more money back than we're putting into the program. And the, uh, the NDP have been propping that up. They've been agreeing with the liberals and they've been supporting their climate change policy. And if I'm not misremembering, I think that Jagmeet Singh has been parroting that as well, is that Canadians are getting more money back than they're putting into this. So why the 180 turn? Well, and that's the question. So now we, we head into today where he was out in front of the House of Commons answering questions. And not surprisingly, this came up again because it's not clear. Can you, can you clarify, we're gonna, we're gonna can you clarify do you support a consumer carbon levy? There is some kind of muddied messaging with last week's speech. You asked about it four times. You talked about doubling down on the industrial carbon price, not burdening working families. Do you support a, a consumer carbon levy? We absolutely need to fight the climate crisis, no question about it. But what we're concerned about is that Pierre Polyev has absolutely no plan. He thinks it's okay to dump uh, toxic waste into rivers. He wants big polluters to do whatever they want. He wants no rules for big polluters. That is a serious problem. I've heard that from Canadians. I've also heard a serious concern that this Liberal government seems to have no money for working class people to buy a, a heat pump, no money for them, but has billions of dollars in subsidies for oil and gas companies. The Liberal plan is unfair. That is my concern, and I continue to, to raise the concern that people have telling me that they're concerned about. Why is the Liberal plan unfair? And why does the Liberal, why the Conservatives, are they so irresponsible to not even have a plan to tackle pollution? Again, he said the, the dumping toxic waste in rivers thing. Yep. Where is this coming from? And also, I will point out that he is currently outside of the House of Commons, meaning that he does not have the parliamentary protections that protect him from saying falsehoods and garbage like that inside the House. Yeah, what's that called? Oh, yeah, slander, defamation, you know, a couple things. Yeah, like if if what he's saying is not true, he could open himself up to libel or slander. But here's the other thing. Um, he just accused, again, the Conservatives of having no plan. We just heard he has no plan. We don't have our full plan laid out. No, but the Conservatives do have a plan and they've given us tidbits of it. Like, you know, they've said, they've talked about nuclear, they've talked about exporting our liquid natural gas to countries that are currently running on coal so that it can give those countries enough time to build up the technology that they need to get to the point of where they can handle nuclear responsibly. Well, and they've also talked about forestry management. They've also talked about providing you know, subsidies and incentives for green energy, not punishing people who use fossil fuels. So sounds like a pretty, pretty sound plan. Now, the difference is, is that Pierre has never said, we don't have a plan. We don't have our full plan laid out. Between the two parties, Jagmeet is the only one that has said, we don't have a plan. We don't have our full plan laid out. And between the two parties, Jagmeet's the only one accusing the other one, who actually has a plan, that they don't have a plan. We don't have our full plan laid out. Well, and just because the Conservatives are not telling you absolutely every single step in their plan does not mean they don't have one. They're not saying anything right now because it's not election time. Right. But I go back to Jagmeet literally said, we don't have a plan flushed out. <laughs> we don't have our full plan laid out. <laughs> so it's just, it is bonkers. Absolute bonkers. I'm sorry, Mr. Singh, you're not, you're not, you're, you're not, you're not answering the question. And, and, and I'm interested to hear as well what you have to say on this. So if you heard that one reporter, uh, the lady reporter, she was the first one asking about their position on the carbon tax. And she's saying, you're, you're not answering the question. And he's like, oh yeah, I am answering. <laughs> <laughs> What a goofball. I'll take it again in English. I right? Just in English. Yeah, yeah. Yes or no? Do you support a consumer carbon levy? Yes or no? Our position has not changed so at all. Yes. But yes no? our position has not changed. What is your position? Our position, is, I mean, you've seen our votes. We, our position, position has not changed. Right, no. What is your position? We absolutely support our price on pollution. We've always supported it. For consumers. We've always supported do you, our price I'm just on looking to clarify, sir. Do you support I've a consumer said that, carbon price? I've, this is the look of a man drowning at a press conference, everybody. He is trying not to say yes or no. Yeah, you would think it was just a simple question. As the reporter put it, yes or no. Do you support a price on pollution for consumers? Yes or no. And kudos to the reporter for digging for an answer. I don't know who the reporter is because uh, she didn't identify herself, but this is what journalists should be doing. When a politician doesn't answer your question, doesn't matter the party, you dig. 
and he's not answering the question, and he's drowning. Said it again and again, and you've seen our votes on this. We absolutely support a price on pollution. We have not changed our position on that. We have not changed our position on that. But you won't actually confirm we what have it not, is. We have not changed our position. I mean, you could look at our voting record. We've been very clear. We support a price on pollution. But our concern, our concern, we have absolutely been very clear our position has not changed. And so you can look at our voting record and our position is very clear. But my concern is this, and I want to be very clear on this concern. I want to spend the time that I have talking about my concern. The liberals say to working class people, we don't have money for you to buy heat pumps. We don't have money to support you, but we've got billions of dollars for oil and gas companies. Workers tell me that is unfair, and that's what we pointed out. So we said that very clearly. And we've said again and again, we need to make sure we fight the climate crisis with everything we have. But the liberals are eroding that trust by not supporting working class people. They are eroding that trust by not saying clearly that who are, whose side are we on? The Liberals right now are making it seem like they're on the side of big polluters and they're not on the side of working class people. How can this government, how can this government justify billions of dollars in subsidies for oil and gas companies and say no to working class people? That is wrong and I want to focus on that. Our position on fighting the climate crisis has not changed. We believe absolutely on a price on pollution. But we also believe the plan has to be fair. And right now, the Liberals are not making a fair plan. They're saying big polluters get bigger and bigger profits, working class people get nothing. Well, that is wrong. You said this last yeah. week. How would you make the carbon pricing scheme more fair? Well, in terms of what I want to see happen, in terms of a plan in general, these are the three values that went. Well, this is, what would you do this to is make our it plan. If you want to ask my plan, this, these are my concerns. Oh, man, he has no idea what he's even no, doing. None. That what, this is my plan. Here are my concerns. <laughs> Two totally different things, Jagmeet. Yeah. Um, maybe you should go to the University of Ottawa and ask uh, Justin Trudeau what what uh, a plan is versus, you know, a, a concern is, you know, misinformation versus disinformation, <laughs> because it, clearly both of you have a severe, severe problem understanding the definitions of words and using them properly. But to me, this is a man who's just standing there spitballing. He's absolutely panicked. He's seen the polls the same as we have, and they are going down, and they are not stopping that downslide. They are going down and down. And he expected, after he announced that PharmaCare quote-unquote plan, that he would go up and up and up, and it had the exact opposite effect. His party is losing relevance. They're, seeing, they're being seen as the ones who are blocking Canadians from having an election, and that's because they are. So they sit here complaining about the Liberals, yet they're the ones, the only ones, propping them up. They are standing in the way of our democracy and our ability to vote the Liberals out of office. Well, and this is the thing, right? So um, he has seen three senior people, people of his party say, we're out. And then, Four, including Blakey, he's been around for a while too, and well, he's like gone, gone. He's not just saying he's retired; he's gone now. Yeah, Blakey left. Two other people left last year. So, you know, this this doesn't look good when you have twenty five percent of your party leave, right? And there's almost you know a little uh, shy of two years left until the next election, and scheduled and election. Three more have announced that they won't be seeking re-election. That's bizarre if there's two more years left, allegedly. Right. So, like, you know, I, I think I think Fox is right. I think he's kind of flailing here. He doesn't know what to do. And I wonder if he thinks that something's going to happen here. Because um, it's just he's he's being so, so cautious. Like, again, if it's if it's two years, almost two years away to the next election, why is he being so hesitant to answer this question? Well, and this is the thing. In a leader, you don't want like flip-flops and hesitancy. You want somebody who's decisive and who's going to give you the answer. Now, because they're politicians, they might not give you the whole answer, but they're not going to be like, oh, well, maybe, I don't know. Well, and in terms of, you know, this is our voting record. Okay, well, your voting record is that you propped up the carbon tax 
And then recently you started to vote with the Conservatives to chip away at the carbon tax. Well, and just a few weeks ago, they supported the Liberals in a confidence motion that the Conservatives brought forward that was centered mainly around the carbon tax. Right. And now right after, you're not even stating a hardline position whether you support it or not. None of this makes sense. No, not, not at all. Not at all. He's like, we support a price on pollution, but all the reporters astutely were, were saying, yeah, but a price on pollution is industrial as well as consumer. What's your position on consumer? Our position hasn't changed. Um, well, evidently it has, because you voted with the Conservatives on Bill 2C, uh, C234. That was to alleviate the carbon tax on the farmers. You supported taking the carbon tax off of the Eastern Canada ri uh, r ridings. You um, voted with the Conservatives on having a live tele emergency tele uh, televised conference between the premiers as well as the prime minister on the carbon tax. So, no, your position is not clear. It is actually very unclear because the conservatives don't want it at all. The liberals don't want to touch it. And you seem to be kind of wanting to sort of maybe take off some of it, but maybe not all of it. It depends. This is the problem. He sounds like he's somebody who is just trying to placate the reporters until he can figure out what's going to get him the most votes. He should have that figured out already. Concerned specifically with the fact that the government has billions of dollars for oil and gas companies and says no to working class people. That's important. But specifically, the spe I'm going to answer the question very specifically. I've been asked a question. This is my final answer. On the, specific, on the final piece on what our plan is, we want to see a plan that makes the big polluters pay their fair share, that's fair to workers, and that reduces our emissions. Thank you very much. Merci. Will you put it on gasoline? Mr. Singh, you're not being clear. A consumer carbon levy on gasoline. So when he saw, when he saw there was going to be nothing other than, dude, you're not being clear. He was like, okay, I'm out of here. Yeah, because everybody's not kissing his butt. Right. They're not asking him anything but... The clarity on the carbon tax because it's not clear if he gave a yes or no answer they would have moved on well and canadians deserve to know canadians deserve to know who they should be supporting well <laughs> that's the thing uh I, I wonder if going into to uh, uh into this budget uh, uh tomorrow if uh, trudeau is one wondering who jagmeet's supporting as well because it's a toss-up with him now he doesn't follow any logical train of thought and logical strategy it's because he doesn't know how to lead a political party i mean we kind of suspected that before but i think it's blatantly obvious now yeah i this is um i think the toughest uh toughest situation that he's had to deal with and he is not coping well he's not dealing with the stress well and he doesn't know what to decide so it sounds like they're trying to play all sides and the house of cards is just collapsing around him. So, you know, his 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 numbers, remember, it was only a couple of months ago, they were almost tied with the Liberals. And it's been the NDP that had been floundering because, you know, it goes back to something that we talked about before in terms of, you know, who's responsible. And, you know, if an employee performs, you know, poorly, it's the employee's responsibility, but only after a certain amount of time, then it becomes the manager of that employee. And if they don't do something, it becomes their man, you know, and so on. So I think Canadians, what they're demonstrating is that, listen, Trudeau is a train wreck, but now he's not the one responsible for being in power. You are Jagmeet. And I think that's why Jagmeet's numbers are starting to take a complete nosedive. And as the NDP numbers go down, the liberal numbers go up. And it's been happening this way for at least a month. Jagmeet, you, you, you're dealing with a problem here and it's not going to go away. And if you don't have some sort of certainty as to what you're doing, and it looks like the only certainty Canadians want is a certainty of Trudeau coming out of office, you are going to be running your party right into the ground. You're not even going to have party status or you'll be sitting right next to Elizabeth May after the next election. We don't have our full plan laid out.